from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Ferrari at breakfast. Call the Commissioner. Put your calls to Cressida Dick now. 0345 6060 973. This is LBC. Good morning. Four minutes after eight, Tuesday, June the 25th. Yes, call the Commissioner calls to Cressida Dick. Just to put in one last word, because I appreciate during the breakfast show you wake up at different times. In the next hour, it's your opportunity to put your calls to Boris Johnson. Yes, the first time since he's launched his campaign to be the Conservative Party leader. And ultimately, of course, the Prime Minister, he's taking your calls. Can you do better than the journalist in trying to tackle him about certain aspects of his colourful background and his colourful life? He's with me in the next hour. Police Commissioner Cressida Dick is across the studio from me now. Welcome, Commissioner. Thank you for coming in. Good morning, Nick. It was on this show in December last year that you said regards the violent crime the tide was turning you'll be aware probably more acutely than most there were five fatalities in five days last week you understand by those words i do stand by the words absolutely because the background figures are still um going if i can put it this way in the right direction overall why does five it feel like it? five murders last year uh, sorry, last week. Last week. Absolutely horrific. <coughs> uh, all very different, but absolutely horrific and involving young people. Um, I think, you know, shocked everybody and uh, I loathe the thought of them. But um, do I stand by, I think the tide is turning? Yes, yes I do. Um, the number of um, homicides at the end of the last financial year was down by 20%. Um, 25% of you include the terrorist attack the year before. The number of um, young people under 25 injured with knives was down just under 20%. So that's 400 less in that financial year than the previous financial year. You, you'll understand and my list don't, doesn't feel like it. No, for them, and, I, and I, I, I do. And I think, there's, I think there are a number of things here. Um, t- if I may, just to say, yes. also, you know, lethal barrel discharges of firearms down. Moped crime, as you know, down by over 50%. So I believe the tide is going in the right direction it is taking a massive effort by all sorts of people not least my very very brave officers and i completely understand uh, that people feel frightened and that people feel there is too much and i've always said there's too much of this sort of violence in london uh, and that these horrific and high profile incidents do nothing but make people feel also more fearful so our job is to get out there to lock up the bad guys, to take the weapons off the streets, to be present, to be reliable, uh, and to keep driving these uh, numbers, and I'm sorry to talk about it in numbers, to no. drive those numbers down and give the best possible support, of course, to young people who are getting dragged into crime or f- the families of uh, people who've been stabbed. And that's what we're trying to do. And I'm proud of the way the guys and girls are doing it. But I completely understand that people on the streets of London are feeling concerned uh, about their young people. But violent crime is up in some areas. It, nationally, violent crime has been up, and certain sorts of certain yes. sorts of violent crime are undoubtedly yes. uh, still, um, it, you know, it either so sli- how can stable you say the tide or going is up. Turning? Well, I, I think I've just been yeah. through that. The, 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 na- the knife injury under twenty-five, the homicides, uh, the firearms discharges—they right. are all going. Time. More questions from me in a moment. Imran is in Chadwell Heath and you're through to the Commissioner. Imran, good morning. Your question. Good morning, Mr. Fari. Uh, good morning to you, Commissioner Dick. Good morning. Um, thank you for taking my question. My, my question is this. Um, early In early March, Mrs. May said, uh, Ms. May said there was no direct correlation between cuts and crime. Uh, the police union, um, subsequent to that, say, uh, slammed Ms. May's comments by describing her as delusional and said that the policing has been stripped to the bone. Ex-Met Chief Bernard Hogan Howe added that more cops are needed on the beat now to stem the flow of clinic killings. Also in early March, subsequent to these comments, you said to Nick Ferrari on LBC Radio that there was some link between falling police numbers and the rise in violent crime. Mm. Um, you, you You also went on to say that there has been times in the past when there has been cuts to police numbers and to funding, but that crime rates hadn't accelerated in the same way that they have in more recent Mm. times. So my question to you is, is that um, if the main cause isn't uh, 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 austerity, uh, if the main reason is not austerity cuts on police numbers and on funding, as your comments would seem to suggest, then what is the main cause or causes? All right, let's get over to the Commissioner. Cressida, do. So so I do want to be clear. I think police numbers uh, falling 
and indeed police budgets uh, reducing as much as they have nationally and in London over the last several years uh, do have a link with uh, crime rates and violent crime that we've been seeing. So it is absolutely one of the factors and an important factor. And I think most people uh, would agree with that. It's very, very, very hard to prove the cause and the effect. Of course it is, because it is so complicated. And you've asked me what are the other factors. Um, I think uh, the fact that uh, many of our young people are finding themselves in a position where uh, there are all too, they are all too easily exploited through social media uh, and other rep methods to get them involved in drug dealing has been a very big problem. Uh, the fact that uh, there are fewer services for some of our young people when they are getting into trouble and difficulty uh, is undoubtedly uh, an, an issue. Um, arguably, people will argue about this, but the glamorization of violence and the um, repeated sort of diet of uh, s significant violence that some of our young people will see on their on their tablets and on their phones uh, is not helping. Um, there are a whole series um, of of issues here. Uh, and you'll be familiar, for example, with county lines. Older people have always exploited younger people, but through social media and the fact that now you can uh, you know, move up and down the country really easily, the drug dealers, the gangsters, the guys that we are trying to target uh, and doing very well in many instances are, however, I'm sorry to say, exploiting children and sending them up and down the country to s deal drugs and taking over vulnerable people, perhaps people with addictions, people with mental health problems, houses, and dealing outside the big cities, outside London, in, in other places. All these things are contributing to uh, a greater uh, propensity uh, over the last few years uh, to, to violence by some, some uh, people. Now, of so course, the vast majority of our young people never get involved in violence. So all. what is to be done about county lines? Well, we're, we're doing a lot um, in London and nationally, we have a much better understanding of uh, how they work and who is doing what. Uh, and every day, every week, uh, my teams are targeting uh, the guys in charge of, of the, the county lines and, and taking down the gangs, uh, intervening and getting them mm. locked up. Sometimes for drug dealing, sometimes for slavery and human trafficking offences. But, but there's much more that needs to be done there well, to try to protect the young people. Uh, and to stop them from getting involved and if they are going up and down the country to bring them back and get but, them into a safe place. But it doesn't feel like that. I say again, Liam Gallagher saying yesterday in an interview that he's, he lives in North London, mm. he would have a, ma a word with the mayor over the amount of crime, amount of knife crime. President Donald Trump saying that under <laughs> London Mayor Sadiq Khan he's a national disgrace because of crime in London. How helpful are those comments? Um, well, if I, if I start with Mr Gallagher, I think he is, um, you know... Re repeating in a way what you've said to me which is that a lot of people are concerned about their young people and I absolutely uh, I absolutely acknowledge that um, I would however say and this takes me on to the next comment of course compared but with people aren't feeling no, safe no, your priority is for people with to feel so safe so many cities including all the major american cities as you well know nick yes. london is a safe city the homicide well, so rate the, in new the, york the is, is two or three times higher than the tag is many we're not cities as dangerous 20 as or 30 years. no that's not my tag but you asked me well, about a comment by 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 the president of the united states i don't want to get into an argument with him but a violence is a challenge in big cities across the world is my point so we Trump are needs to absolutely to focused on driving down the violent crime in London and with a huge effort and not enough, to go back to Imran's question, <laughs> resources, we are making inroads into this. We can't do it by ourselves. We need the public to help us. They're helping us more and more. We need information. We need people to look after each other. We need people to look after young people. We need uh, you know, people to help people getting to and from school, all these things. They are beginning to help. The work in the hospitals, the work the charities are doing is fantastic. And I honestly believe we're heading in the right direction. Lastly on this, does it dent your officers' morale when they hear President Trump say some things such as that? Um, the great thing I think about police officers is, and police staff is that they're very focused on their own jobs. Uh, we're focused on what we're doing in London. We're focused on London's communities. Uh, and I would be very surprised if, 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 it, if it dents their morale. Equally, I would be sad if it if it affects London's international reputation in an unfair way. And the President needs to look to perhaps some of US cities, as you were saying. I think every, everybody in what perhaps once was called the Western world needs to look at what's going on in big cities, and the American cities have t tremendous, tremendous challenges with the most serious violent crime, all of them.
We looked at the weekend where in London we suffered, unfortunately, three fatalities. That weekend in Baltimore it was 14, so that puts it into perspective. <coughs> Marie is in Lamp. Thank you for your question, Imran. Mar- Marie, your question. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Yes. I wanted to know from Christopher Dick if she believes that police officers would do better with young people when they're stopping and searching them if they were a little bit more courteous. Because what I see doesn't signify that they know how to speak to them. A lot of young people leave school without the right kind of education so they don't know how to talk to people. And then having to come into contact with police officers who, are, who find them under suspicion, who haven't got any proof, Right. But the way that they seem to treat them is really aggressive. How how do you think that could be helped? Commissioner. So I think it is very, very important. That, as you know, Marie, we are doing uh, more stop and search um, and probably about 30% more this year than last. And I would say to very, very good effect in terms of taking weapons uh, off the streets and t- uh, targeting those who are prolific carriers of weapons and those most prone to violence. I also know that stop and search uh, throughout the history of London has been a a, a contentious issue and something that people feel very strongly about for all kinds of reasons. Um, My officers are, I believe, very professional. They all have their body-worn videos. If people aren't happy with the way a stop and search has been conducted, then of course they should say so, and we can look at the body-worn video. But the body-worn video doesn't come on automatically, does it? You have to you have to switch it on. Yeah, you, ha- you have to switch it on, but it is on in stop and search um, well over 80%, probably near and to 90% of the time. I don't think it is practical to insist that it will be on 100% of the time, but it's nearly always on. And, and, and what I I'm request saying is people an officer to put it on. If I was stopped this afternoon, can I say to the officer, I'd like you to put the camera on, please? If they if they were going to stop and search you, yes, yeah. of course you could. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and they would have yeah. to. Well, I think they just would. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, they would. There's no law that says they have to. But they, they, they would do that because they oh, see... So they wouldn't have to. They, they say, see I that as to. a protection. No, genuinely, my officers see that, see uh, the video as a protection. But I want to come to Marie's point, which is courtesy and good communication is incredibly important. But and as you say, sometimes young people don't necessarily you know, have the experience of speaking to an older person who's in authority in that way. And that's why we're investing in our officers in schools so that the first time a a young person meets a police officer, hopefully it will be in a completely non-confrontation, non-adversarial way. And they will see that the police are human beings too, they're decent people, and that they're there to protect and support them. But I expect courtesy from my officers. And I I think this is an ongoing, uh, and I think the vast majority of the time we get that. But I think this is an ongoing conversation because you are talking, as you say, about very young people talking to people much older. Well, uh, and um, throughout history, that has been a challenge. Indeed. Why don't we make it policy that they switch on their cameras if they're doing a stop? Uh, it's not... It, I don't think it is completely practical. No, Some, it, it honestly is not practical, Nick. Sometimes people will be f- rushing to deal with something. Uh, and but a routine stop? Uh, they will be rushing to deal with something. Sometimes, sometimes, rarely, they will be off duty when they do a stop and search. Sometimes they will be they will be in plain clothes uh, where it, and right. a covert but if where you've it got is your not camera, practical. If you've got your video camera, <coughs> it should be policy that you flick it to on. We ex- we expect them to do so. We expect them. Uh, to it, do we so. expect them to do so. Uh, but I'm what, what I'm very clear about is that I do not think they should be disciplined if they don't manage to do so. No, but they should switch it on. If 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 they are getting into an interaction okay. w- with a member of the public, which is which is using a power or is likely to get contentious, then we would expect the video to be on. On the subject of courtesy, thank you, Marie. On the subject of courtesy, is it fair to say, Commissioner, that your officers perhaps exhibited too much courtesy to the Extinction Rebellion protesters who came to town a couple of months ago? Um, that was an incredibly demanding and huge scale of operation, as you know, Nick. Uh, you also know, and I imagine this is where your question is going next, that one or two of our officers... Um, received what we call words of advice. You're ahead of for, me, yes. um, for What do words of advice mean? Words for of my advice, listeners, what does that words mean? Words of advice simply means that actually now you look at that, let's say it was me that did it. I can't now see you, you skateboarding. Now sure you, you look can, at that, Cresta, you've got to see that that looks unprofessional or that looks like you're being you know, Im- not impartial. That was unwise. I don't think there's a professional in the world who is as well scrutinised as our police officers. They've got camera phones, they've got videos, mm. they've got everybody watching them, the media watching them all the time. And out of the thousands and thousands of officers, ten, over 15,000 officer days, two did something which looked a bit over-friendly. It was a very, very, Are very difficult operation. Are those the singers or the skateboarders? Because we had skateboarding as well, <laughs> didn't we? Skateboard- I, I, I think there were two instances the, the singing. that we know about. Yes. We've also had 
less than a dozen complaints. We, well, as I'm not you know, su- overall, commissioner, I'm not surprised. We arrested 1,151 people. And is it right we every arm and process- leg needs a separate officer? We, we are processing those people right. through the... Well, we are, we are putting them through the criminal justice system where there is evidence to do so. Right. And we are determined that all those that... Uh, can be charged or taken to court will be. Will and the sentences be harsh started. enough as and when proven guilty? Uh, well, I I have actually talked with the Home Secretary and others about the need to look again at the powers that the police have in these sorts of protests, which are apparently peaceful, but because of the serious disruption, unlawful. The powers that we have and the deterrent that there is you need for greater people powers. to behave. behave. I, th- I absolutely think this needs to be reviewed, and, I've, and well, I, I, I'm very clear about that. A review equals greater powers? I I. Th- it, it needs to be made easier for the police to deal with something like that uh, faster uh, and be able so to... Um, actually, there has to be a significant deterrent for people from behaving like that with a ah. serious disruption. And Along one of the ways in which you might do that, as you say, is to make it more of a serious crime. But that's with a longer it, stretch I, I in jail. Am not, no, 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 no you don't decide it. it but you I'm not in Parliament. A, no, I'm not a judge. Not yet. <laughs> I don't want to be <laughs> <laughs> ever. Um, it... it so this is something for a longer others stretch to decide, in jail. but I think there should be a greater deterrent, yeah. absolutely, and there should be a way in which we can stop people simply bringing our city to a halt and right. causing such serious disruption. Alex, your question a moment. Final one on this. How did a pink yacht get to Oxford Circus without being stopped? I wasn't there. I don't know exactly how it got there. Well, you must have found out subsequently I, as I, the boss. No, I don't know exactly how it got there. I genuinely don't. Didn't the cameras see it coming <laughs> in? <laughs> I mean, I can't park on a red route without one of your blokes of, of or women course. coming after me. Of course they saw it. I think the question as to why it didn't get intercepted earlier is partly back to what I have just been discussing. What, you haven't got powers is, to intercept a pink uh, yacht? No. It, a yacht that stops in the middle of Oxford Circus, <coughs> the old Bill hasn't got Not, the power to say, Oi, move that yacht on. Th- there is is not specific legislation that says you can So not I could park oh, wait, wait, a wait. yacht this yeah. afternoon and I'm not going to get There is, nicked. of course, legislation about highway obstruction. Yes. Of course there is. But there, why wasn't there, that exercise, but, Commissioner? But because there is also, in the early stages, absolutely enshrined in law, a strong uh, you know, law which says that we have to allow protest in a democracy which causes a reasonable you won't think it was reasonable to put a pink boat do you? amount of disruption do you i don't but Thank i can you. tell you that if we had tried to intercept the pink boat we wouldn't have had the power to do so nor as soon as it was um on the highway like that is there a specific piece of legislation that says you can take street furniture away like that and so these are the kinds of things we need to look at of course they are alex is in watford alex your question of the commissioner go ahead Good morning, Commissioner. Good Good morning, morning. Nick. Hello. Uh, um, Seven MPs declared their drug of choice. They were or are running for the top job in the country. Uh, uh, Surely, uh, Commissioner, if you made such a uh, if you made such a point confession, confession or declaration, you would have to stand down from your position as um, the commission commissioner. the next point is this. Okay. Surely the um, drug dealers and their associated cl- crimes are laughing all the way to the bank. Shouldn't the bare minimum your officers make inquiries with these seven MPs? Well, I have to say, I, I think on a couple of occasions they've actually taken place overseas, so I don't know what powers of the Met, but probably the most prominent, and let's not mix our words, Michael Gove admitted that he'd used Class A drugs when he was a journalist some 30, I think it was 20 or 30 years ago. Commissioner Dick. Um, your first question is, would I have to stand down? Well, firstly, I'm not going to make such a confession. You'll be relieved to know. Thank God for uh, that. Because We've got I, enough going um, on today. I, I have never, ever um, taken any drugs at all. Um, secondly, I don't know if I would have to stand down, but uh, certainly um, I think it unlikely that in the time when I joined the police, I would actually have got in if, if I had said to them at that time that I had had a drugs habit or had, had, a, had taken drugs. Nowadays, it is possible if you are completely rehabilitated uh, for somebody to get in even if you uh, use class a it, it, it's possible if you're completely rehabilitated yes and okay. depending on the, all the circumstances of course um should should we be investigating um any or all 
Uh, I think the short answer to that is each circumstance is different. Um, we have had a, a very quick look at uh, all, all the things that have been in the, in the public domain. Um, and I can assure you that uh, in a no, c you have to satisfy two things. Firstly, uh, is is there evidence? And then, secondly, would this would there it be the CPS to have to decide? Would it be in the public interest to take any action? Um, and of course, with things being so historic that are being talked about, uh, it's um, almost certainly not in the public interest. But actually, in the cases that we have read about. Uh, and I'm not going to talk about any of them specifically, but in all those cases, uh, there is no sign that there would be sufficient evidence. But you did uh, have someone have a quick look at it. Uh, of course I did. I looked at it myself. You, looked at, you personally looked at it? Absolutely. And um, how do you make your determination? On, on the basis of law. Right, yes, of course. Advice that we have previously received from the CPS. Uh, and uh, Why did you take it upon yourself re re to do it yourself? Why did well, you I, didn't, I didn't go through every single no. one. I just said to my team, somebody's going to ask me the exact question. Yes, that, that Alex that, just that, has. That Alex has asked. And um, I think I know the answer, but let's just double check. And the answer is, uh, on the basis of what we know and what we've seen, there is no sign whatsoever that there would be sufficient evidence to take somebody to court, so we won't be doing any investigating. Alex, thank you. On a related issue, where are you on members of the public sending in videotapes or recordings of people in their houses possibly being involved in domestic disturbances? Sorry, is that a question yes, for me, Nick? Yes, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so sorry. No, sorry, no where are you sorry, on that? Don't worry. Sorry. Um, I refer, of course, to the incident in Camberwell. What do we know that took place regarding another politician, so, Boris Johnson? So I have nothing to say on this subject beyond what's already in the public domain, which is... Uh, that, as you know, in Camberwell on uh, yes. an evening last week, we were we were called. Uh, it was um, but more broadly talking about well uh, the welfare of yes. the people inside, and we had we called, we spoke to both people, and there was no cause for us to no. take any further the, action. The Met social media post tells the public you are not interfering for getting involved in domestic incidents. Do you agree with that? Therefore, what they did in Camberwell. Um, I think it is important that people call the police when they're worried about somebody. Of course. Um, and that's that's as far as it goes. I'm a police officer, yeah. so I want people to tell us if they're worried about something. Should they make recordings? Um, I, I don't have a view, I don't have a view on that really. I mean, it can be helpful for us if there is evidence of a crime, of course. Yeah. Uh, that we're then going to be investigating. If somebody has made some sort of recording, that that can be very helpful. Yes, but should that recordings then be found find its way to the media? Well, that that genuinely is not something for me to comment on. All I would say is that. In, uh, in an incident where we have been called because uh, somebody is worried about somebody else and when we get there, both parties are fine and there are no offences yes. revealed, we would not put that into the public domain. OK. Uh, because we, and we have a very clear policy about this and uh, we wouldn't unless a journalist comes in and asks us very specific details. It was about suggested it. that Scotland Yard wasn't particularly forthcoming quickly with details of what happened in Camberwell. Are you aware of that? I'm aware of the suggestion. I have looked briefly at this. I don't think we treated this incident in any way differently from whoever it might have been. Uh, the most important person in the land or the most humble, for one of a better yeah, person yeah, in the land, yeah. or Nick Ferrari yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. We dealt with it in exactly the way we would. And we, so, so we so did. So the details in were, terms were, of were at the same speed as to whether it was Boris Johnson or that. Bertie Bugalugs I, I in Morton that. High Street. I believe that. All right. OK, let's move on to other questions. And it's Gillian in Croydon. Gillian, you're on the radio. Good morning. Oh, hello. Good morning, Nick. Good morning, Krista. Yeah. Um, yeah, my question to you is, why did you not, see, or why did the police not feel it necessary to investigate the um, the comments um, made by Joe Brand um, regarding the um, throwing of acid this over was a, people? This was a supposed joke on a, mm. a Radio 4 show, which is yeah. the idea, of course, that there is a bit of milk shaking going on, and the so-called comic said, why don't we place it with battery acid? Mm. Nigel Farage, of course, has been milk shaked, if there is now a verb in that fashion, said that the police should have a look at it. Was he right, Commissioner? Uh, so, again, um, a high-profile matter, something some people were you know, very upset about, we understand that. Uh, and something that we had a look at. I wouldn't put it any more strongly than that. What we, does that we mean? Have a look? Does it well, mean we, someone we, takes we a phone call? No, no, no. <laughs> we looked at the material. There was material online. Right. Uh, and we looked at the material. And on that occasion, it's quite a complicated set of legislation. Uh, I think Mr Farage suggested it might be incitement. Um, it's quite complicated. Uh, but I can assure you that, uh, again, the law and stated cases make it quite clear uh, that uh, no offence would have been committed or had been committed by uh, Miss Brand in those circumstances and therefore we did not mount a further investigation. How much is this a waste of police time? Well it takes very 
uh, luckily, I have lots of people who are extremely expert in some of the more convoluted parts of the law. And um, although my first instinct was straight away, as somebody you know who's uh, been around in policing a long time, this may have offended a great number of people, yes, uh, and and more maybe, but is not a crime that was my instinct that was one where i turned to one of my experts and in a matter of minutes they came back and said no no you're quite right it's not it doesn't waste lots of police time um now i know you're very keen that your officers are well protected one senior officer i speak of northamptonshire's chief constable nick adderley says he believes that the taser guns within three years will be part of your ppe which i think is personal protection equipment personal protective equipment i'm sorry is he right um I don't know. I don't think I don't think I agree with him. Um, But what I can say is that before I became commissioner, just before I became commissioner, I I increased the volume of taser that we had. And I've increased it again uh, in the two years and a bit that I've been there. And I'm about to increase it again. However, uh, so it is still the case that the majority of my officers do not carry uh, taser. Um, a, a, a proportion of my response officers carry taser. All my armed officers carry taser as well because it's a less lethal option and a mm. very good piece of kit. Um, and most commonly, as you know, if I point a red dot gun, I'm going to uh, calm I'm down. Just stop. So it's a fantastic piece of equipment. Uh, and uh, some of my other um, sort of specialists, people on the territorial support group, for example, the people on the violent crime task force, not all, but most. Uh, quite a lot of my officers now do carry uh, a taser. But you but must like it if you keep less, I, I, think, I think it is a very good piece of kit. Well, my own view is that we have quite a, uh, a high availability in London already uh, to protect the public and officers. Um, and, and secondly, it is, although a less lethal option, it is a difficult piece of kit to use and I want to know which I do that my officers are both highly trained very very fit and very capable to do it so I don't feel the need for example to issue uh, my probationary officers with taser and some forces with the sheer sheer lack of officers and uh, you know huge spaces that they are policing have taken a slightly different policy and and that's a national nationally agreed policy that people will do different things right um, how I many extra emphasize. are you introducing? You say you're, so this is, I think, your third increase. If I'm yeah, I'm, you I'm doing a small uplift now, and I intend okay. because you know we've got more money uh, from uh, the mayor. Yeah, uh, but how and many? From the what's government. an uplift? An extra thousand? An extra fifteen? Uh, it, won't, it won't be that many on this occasion, so, but we're next hundreds. year it could be. It could be. Uh, I hope more than that, um, because because you, you know we started the, we started the conversation. Well, with, obviously they with work. Violent crime, they do work. So, I mean, if a bloke or a woman has been in the force for a number of years and he doesn't, we must we must afford him that because he joined. But, but other than that, shouldn't it be every cop has, gets to um, carry one? I don't think so. I don't think every. I don't think so. I don't think every person does want to. Uh, firstly, um, secondly, it is you know not without cost training the people and 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 giving them the kit. Uh, and thirdly, um, as I say, I want I want to know, and not everybody will agree with me, including within the Met. I'm quite sure, but these are sort of decisions yes. that I have to make. Uh, I want to know that I have sufficient out there to protect the public and my officers. And at the moment, I think I need more again. Uh, but equally, I want to know that the people who are using them are really, really fit and 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 well trained to use. A couple them. of last quick questions. Apologies, I don't know the name of the unit, but the men and women who provide royal protection on the motorbikes. Do we need to review their practice after the incident in South West London, where an elderly lady was, it would appear, struck by a motorbike, police motorbike, with the Duke of Cambridge? Well, that was a, a very shocking and ho- and horrible thing that happened. A, a collision between a police motorbike and a and an elderly lady and you know our thoughts and prayers are, are with her um the uh officers who do that work um are genuinely you know world leaders mm. you, you probably know this nick they are are admired by their colleagues across the world who do a similar well, sort possibly of work not on this occasion and i think uh, well Let's see yes. what the investigation shows. This is, of course, being thoroughly investigated. But why do they need to go and at we'll 60? Need to, to, we'll need to 60 look at 60 miles that. an hour. Uh, on occasion, they absolutely do need to go very, very fast to get ahead in order to be able to secure the next junction, secure the next junction, or uh, depending on what's going on with the principal. But I'm not going to comment any further on this particular I- incident. All, to, all I'm saying is it will be investigated if there is learning that can be taken from it in terms of well, surely their there must tactics. Be. Must well, we'll, we'll see. We'll okay. see. All right. Uh, ten months we passed you a dossier on anti-Semitism. There have been a number of arrests. Can you give us a word on that? 
Um, not giving a running commentary, as you know, the no. investigations do continue. Uh, and yes, we have made some arrests. We have interviewed some people. We have more material now than we had when you handed me uh, the, the, the the papers. Uh, and um, we will we will continue with that. So there could be more arrests down the line. Uh, that we we. We are carrying on with that handful, I think I described it as, as, as of investigations. And lastly, it is reported today that Scotland Yard are probing Madeleine McCann's disappearance have held high-level talks with the Portuguese police team. Can you tell us anything on that? Um, we frequently speak to the Portuguese police team. Right, but I haven't seen this particular story, oh, okay. but, 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 but we there's do. A, there's an, a, a, apparently a new <coughs> suspect. This is coming out of Porto, telling the Daily Mirror that there's a new name that's been to Portuguese detectives and now has found its way to Scotland Yard. I'm not going to comment on that at all. Again, we don't give a running commentary no? okay. on, on that case. You know we're still uh, doing our work as, as best as we possibly can. I think people would expect us to... Uh, it would be fantastic if it was. I don't know whether it will be, um, but we are carrying on. But you're determined to stick with it. And we frequently speak to our to our um, Portuguese colleagues. I th- there, there are lines of inquiry, and while there are still lines of inquiry, we will of course continue with those uh, once we get to a point, or if we get to a point uh, where there are no longer a- active lines of inquiry, then of course we'll, we will, as with all uh, sort of similar investigations, say right that one is now. Um, closed or dormant if you like if new information comes in we have it all ready to go to, to, to look at it again yes if boris johnson needs an exclusion zone to get back to the house he shares with his girlfriend would you put one in place because there are protesters there currently i i don't really understand your question Nick, but well, he we'll, can't get we'll to his do, house we'll, at the moment we'll do our job right if, if protesters are blocking the front entrance with banners talking about class war would some of your blokes and women go and have a word so he could at least they could at least get into their flat uh we we have officers who every day are dealing with situations in which people are protesting or people are in the way. I'm not going to comment on particular circumstances. I haven't seen what's happening exactly outside that house, but I have complete confidence in the officers if they are called uh, to, to deal with that, to deal with that in a manner which is proportionate and upholds the law and keeps people safe. Good seeing you again. Thank you for coming by the studio. Thank you very much Police indeed, Nick. Co- p- Police Thank Commissioner you. Cressida Dick appearing here on LBC When News is next. The Met Police Commissioner has told LBC overall figures on violent crime in London are going in the right direction despite five suspected murders in the capital in five days last week. Cressida Dick has also...